Hi guys, welcome to my channel and to another reading vlog. And this week I am so excited because I'm finally gonna get to read two of my most anticipated new releases for the summer. And the first one that I'm gonna start out with is A Sorceress Comes to Call by T. Kingfisher. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm a huge fan of T. Kingfisher. I feel like she can do no wrong. Nettle and Bone is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, one of my ultimate kind of found family traveling fantasy stories that I recommend to everyone. And this one looks like, or at least I hope, it's going to be just as good. It's supposed to be a retelling of the Goose Girl myth, which I honestly don't know that much about. Didn't look it up, decided to go in blind, um, and I am so excited. Uh, I did last night start reading this, I read the first three chapters where we are introduced to our main character, Cordelia. Cordelia is, um, she's a, a girl who is kind of trapped by her mother, who we come to find out is the sorceress in the title of A Sorceress Comes to Call. Cordelia's mother is just the worst. She does things like take control of Cordelia's body so that when they go to church together, Cordelia cannot do anything to embarrass her mother that kind of thing. Um, it is it is not great. Cordelia has a beloved horse, we come to find out, um, a beautiful white horse that she loves more than anything. But what she really wants is to escape her mother. And that I feel like is going to be the journey that we are going to be going on in this book. And then after I finish reading this, my plan is to read The Mercy of the Gods by James S. A. Corey. This is James S. A. Corey's new series, the first book in a new series. Um, they are the authors of The Expanse. The Expanse is nine volumes. Um, so if you're looking to start somewhere, I'm hoping this is gonna be something I'm gonna be able to recommend to people that really wanna get into those books, but are intimidated by a nine book series. So glad you're here. I'm really excited, hope you enjoy the journey. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and start the vlog. It is Saturday morning and I am here to give an update on A Sorceress Comes to Call by T. Kingfisher. Last night I stayed up until one o'clock in the morning and I read 60% of this book, which is pretty speedy. I'm a pretty fast reader, but honestly, like I have just been like going through this so aggressively and 
I am loving it so much. Let me tell you a little bit more about what the book's about. I mentioned in my last update that our main character is Cordelia. Cordelia is a young girl. She's 14, although her mother tells people that she's 17 because she wants to marry her off. More on that later. And she has been abused by her mother her entire life. Her mother is a sorceress who controls people in horrible ways. She can enter their minds and make them do anything that she wants with their bodies, basically turn them into puppets. So Cordelia has been suffering with this her entire life. One day, her mother comes home and tells her that they are going to move to a new house because her mother is planning to seduce the squire and get him to marry her. So she'll be married to a rich man and then she'll be able to marry Cordelia off to a rich man as well. So they arrive at this house, at the squire's house, and he has a sister. Her name is Hester and Hester is kind of the other main character of the book. She's the other POV character. She is um, one of T. Kingfisher's strengths, I think, is her ability to write older women in a way that is just like so real. So a lot of fantasy books really center around these super young girls, like everybody's 20, 19, 20, 21, and that's fine. But as someone who is not 19, 20, and 21, I do like to see older characters sometimes. And T. Kingfisher does a great job with that. I do have a little bit of a complaint in this one that she is um, treating a 51 year old lady as though she is on the edge of um, death. And I think there might be some um, kind of story reasons for that. I'm not totally sure, but we'll see. I think we're going to find out maybe she's not as old as she feels like she is. So I think there's going to be some of that, but it's a little bit like she's 51 and man, she is like acting like she is on death's door. So Hester is a smart lady in the way that T. Kingfisher's older lady characters always are. And she is not convinced by Evangeline's act and she does not want her to marry her brother. And she's trying to figure out what she can do to make it so that that doesn't happen. And she hits upon the idea of having this house party. So she invites all of her friends to this house party and they're going to um, try to kind of scheme and figure out how they can stop this from happening. And I don't want to spoil the plot line of the book. I will say it has some of that signature T. Kingfisher humor that we all love, especially from Hester. She's got a really kind of sarcastic sense of humor that I am very into. But then we also have a lot of darkness. This is not one of T. Kingfisher's books that is just light and happy and fluffy all the way through. There are serious things. There's darkness. There's death. I, I would not go into it thinking that it's going to be a cozy fantasy. This is not one of her books that I would call a cozy fantasy. I would actually put it somewhere in between her horror novels and her fantasy novels in terms of the darkness. Um, I'm really loving it. I would expect that I'm probably going to be able to finish it today, which I'm really excited about. I'm just really enjoying it. Um, and I have been waiting for this book. It's my most anticipated book. And you know how it is when you are reading a book and you're like, I just don't want this book to be over. Like, I almost feel like I should try to read it slower, but I'm not going to. I'm going to read it fast. We're going to get through it. But I'm glad I'm liking it because I already pre-ordered the physical copy for a release date. So that's good or I was going to have to cancel that. So I'm going to try to read some more of that this afternoon. Um, let's see, what else am I doing? So we don't have a lot of plans this weekend. Um, Mostly just regular stuff. I've got to do our grocery stock up. I've already done our grocery list. So I have to go to Aldi and then I need to go to the library because I have books to return and I need to get the rest of the books that I have on my TBR that I chose for this month, or at least the ones that the library has. I read books kind of like, I would say primarily on Kindle, but I also like to have the physical copy so I can go back and forth some. So if they have a physical copy and there's not a wait, I'll usually go ahead and and pick that up too. So I need to go to the library. And I also wanted to show you all that I have been working on um, a crochet project. So I used to, I actually, um, I think it's still up, but I think the pictures aren't working. I don't know what's going on. Um, I had a sewing and knitting blog for a really long time that was actually, I would say fairly popular. And I did a lot of crocheting, um, but then I kind of like realized that I couldn't keep crocheting and knitting at that level and also still be able to play the piano. So I kind of cut way back on that uh, and started sewing and I also still sew, but I thought it would be fun to make a crocheted blanket. So I've been working, I've like barely started, I know, um, on a 
ripple pattern blanket. So I've got, these are purple and kind of like a, a taupe color. And then I also have a pale blue and I have a gray. So I think all those colors together are gonna make a really pretty striped blanket and I'm really looking forward to working on that. So I'm gonna try, I've been wanting to do a row every day because any more than that is a little bit too much for my wrist. Um, I have not been succeeding at that because I don't have enough light in my living room to be able to sew after it gets dark. So I'm gonna try to get maybe two rows in this afternoon, um, but we'll see. Maybe I'll take some video of, of that so you can see my, um, my iffy crochet technique. But anyway, yeah, so looking forward to having kind of a relaxing weekend and hopefully finishing this book today and being able to go ahead and start my next book, The Mercy of the Gods, um, either tonight or probably tomorrow. So this is all gonna go much quicker than I thought it would. And this is what happens when you read books that you're really excited about. So, yay. Um, I'll be back in a little while to update you all. It is now Sunday and I am here to give my wrap up for A Sorceress Comes to Call. So first of all, I'm going to give you my rating. My rating is five stars out of five stars. I really, really loved this book. T. King Fisher um, is just one of my all-time favorite authors. Just all of her books, whether it's horror or it's fairy tale or it's fantasy, they all just hit for me because she has this way of creating characters you really care about, of making points without hitting you over the head with those points. Um, I just, I don't know, I really loved her. I don't wanna to spoil too much about this book. What I would say is if you like fairy tales, especially darker fairy tale retellings, you would like this book. If you liked Nettle and Bone, you would like this book. It has a similar kind of um, fairy tale vibe to it. But I think that out of her books, the one that it is the most similar to is actually What Moves the Dead, which is the Edgar Allan Poe retelling. This book is not light and fluffy. It has its moments when it's very, very dark. It's not without, you know, gore and horror parts, things like that. But then again, so are fairy tales as well as the fairy tale that it's based on. So the fairy tale that this is based on is the Goose Girl, which I did not read before I finished the book. And then I went and read it. And I think that they are similar, but I would not go into this expecting a retelling because it's kind of not. It's kind of a story that uses the same character names and some of the same tropes, but it is definitely not an exact retelling. I would say it is more like inspired by the story. I 
As always, love T. Kingfisher's older characters, her older women. She does such a fantastic job with them. Um, my complaint about her making a 51-year-old lady seem like she was on death's door it kind of still stands a little bit. I was hoping it was going to be redeemed, but they still kind of made her seem like she was just like the oldest 51-year-old I have ever seen. But that's all right. Um, overall, I just, I really loved it. And I think if you like any of those things, and if you have read a T. Kingfisher and you like them, and also I think if you've read her horror, this would be a good crossover between the fantasy and the horror, because it does have those horror elements to it. And that's all I'm going to say, because I don't want to spoil anything. I want you to read this book, because I really loved it. And I think that it is now maybe my second favorite of T. Kingfisher's books after Nettle and Bone. And I don't have to be sorry that I already pre-ordered the special edition. Yay. So I'm looking forward to getting that next week when the book releases. Hey guys, it's me from the future. And um, I was planning to put this vlog out on release date for these books. And um, I did not make it. So it's going to go up tomorrow. But in the meantime, I thought I could go ahead and do an unboxing for my copy of A Sorceress Comes to Call, which came from Amazon today. So I'm just gonna try, I'm gonna make an attempt to open this without causing trouble. I don't know why Amazon needs this much tape. So let's see what the book looks like. And it's so pretty. Let me just go ahead and hold that up. Here we go, get um, kind of a close up of that. You can kind of see the little circle in the middle that's shiny and then the foiling everywhere else. And then on the inside, if I take off the dust jacket, you can see there is this illustration of a goose. Ah, it's so cute, I die. And then I also saw that if you take off the dust jacket completely, you can see that it's got a lovely little door on the outside of the book. So that's just adorable. Oh, and in the back, more geese. You can never have too many geese. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna definitely be excited to put that one on my shelf because it is such a good book and such an adorable book. So I definitely recommend this edition. And uh, with that, um, let me take you back to the rest of the vlog. Okay, so then after I finished that yesterday, I went ahead and started The Mercy of the Gods by James S.A. Corey. So this is um, James S.A. Corey, who's actually two people. It's their new release for their new series. I have read, let's see what percentage am I on? Because I just read some more. I'm on 16%. So it starts out and you're on a planet that is not Earth or anything in our solar system. The main characters are humans and they are on this planet and it kind of feels like nobody really knows how humans got to this planet, which is very clearly not a planet that was designed to support human life or earth life. So that's one of the mysteries that they're trying to solve or that they've been working on in the beginning. Um, the main characters in this book are scientists. They are all part of a research group. Seems like maybe a little bit of a university situation. I'm not really clear. Um, but now at 15%, we are starting to get some hints that there's going to be um, something mysterious going on, maybe some kind of a alien invasion. I don't know. I made that up. I don't really know what's going on. But anyway, I am enjoying it. I find that James S.A. Corey's books read super fast. They are easy to digest. This one's a little bit shorter than some of the other books that they wrote, like a lot of the Expanse books will get up around that 600 page mark. And this one is, um, I think it's around 430. I'm not, don't hold me to that because I am reading an ARC. And I don't know if you know, um, if you haven't ever read an e-ARC, a lot of times they don't have page numbers in them because the book's not completed. So I just have a percentage. I don't know what page I'm on or how many pages there are. And I found two different page number counts for this book when I went looking for it. So not totally sure. But anyway, I'm enjoying it so far. 
So I am probably going to go out later this afternoon. I'm going to go to the library. Um, I think I might stop by Goodwill, see if they have any any books. I find that's the key with my Goodwill is you just got to go there every couple weeks or whenever you pass by it to see if they've got anything new in and get some more reading done. And I think that's kind of it for my Sunday. I already did some yard work this morning. Um, yeah, having kind of a quiet weekend, which is actually kind of nice. So I will see you all in a little bit. Just like a dream, you and I are standing wild and free with petals so golden, the sun's warm kiss, a love so strong, a bliss. Whispers of the breeze, secrets unfold. It's you that I need, it's you that I want. When the world gets cold. Hi guys, welcome back. Um, I took a few days away from vlogging to kind of think about what I wanted to say in my final review of The Mercy of Gods. So this is actually a really kind of difficult review for me because I did not enjoy this book nearly as much as I wanted to. Um, give me a second, I'll explain why. I don't think it's a bad book. I just think the problem is I went into it expecting it to be of a similar quality to Leviathan Wakes, which is the first book in The Expanse. And for me, it just, it just did not get there. Let me go back to the beginning. So we are on this planet at the beginning of the book that is very much, um, it feels very much like Earth. They have a lot of things that are basically the same as you would have if you were setting a book on Earth, but it's not Earth. And I feel like if you're gonna make it the same as Earth, it should just be Earth. So I felt like that was kind of squandered. And then of course we have this alien invasion and the enslavement of these people. And the aliens themselves were very, strange kind of like almost kind of I guess like bug-like creatures there were others too not just the bug-like ones but definitely bug-like aliens which of course we've seen before I didn't find them super scary or intimidating um there are chapters that also take place inside the head of this alien called the swarm those also didn't really work for me super well but really the problem was I just didn't care about any of the characters the book didn't feel like it had one character who was really the central focus of the story. And so for me, I didn't feel like I really had anybody to root for. In the end, it felt like the entire book was just a prologue for setting up what I'm sure is going to be a super, super long series. So I was a little bit bored to get through it, to be honest. Um, so for me, this is going to fall at... I think either a um, 3 or 3.5 star. I certainly, if you loved The Expanse and you love James S.A. Corey, you love their writing, then this is something I'm not going to tell you not to check out. Just be aware that it's definitely just doing the heavy lifting to set up a story that I think is going to pay off more. It didn't have the characters that were quite as memorable as the ones that are in The Expanse, but this is a new series, it's a new world, it's a whole different thing, so. But for me, this was not a favorite, which is slightly disappointing, but this entire vlog has been so great and so fun. Um, a Sorceress Comes to Call was an easy, easy five-star read for me, and I'm excited for my copy of it to arrive so that I can put it on my bookshelf. 
Um, that's a high recommendation for me. I would definitely recommend that if you like fantasy or horror or retellings or fairy tales or any of those things that you go ahead and, and check out A Sorceress Comes to Call because I thought it was just fantastic. The other book, I would say maybe if you're curious, there's nothing wrong with trying it out, but it's not something that I would recommend that you run out and pre-order or anything like that. So with that, we have reached the end of the vlog. I hope that you all have enjoyed watching me read these two anticipated releases and that if you're not subscribed, you consider subscribing and stick around a little bit and be a part of the conversation here as we talk about books and fantasy and sci-fi and romance and all the genres that I love. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. And now I'm going to head off to enjoy my weekend and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.